Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Stock Swing Trader. Weekly market research, analysis, and game plan for this week. In today's video, we will cover the market performance and significant actionable levels. And of course, we are going to take a look at some stocks and play ideas for this week. If you are very new to the program, we want to welcome you aboard. You can find all the trades posted in the performance portfolio link provided in this newsletter. Updates will be posted as well under the updates column in the performance portfolio, so-called PP++ sheet, and they will also be announced on the private X feed, the link also provided in the email. Don't forget to check the earnings calendar and the major economic events for the week just down below in the stock swing trader newsletter. Remember, position sizing is essential and we highly recommend scaling into targets uh, and letting the winners run. Now let's take a look at the market, my favorite part. First of all, we're gonna start with the cues. What a week last week was, OMG. We had the FOMC, we had option expiration, quadruple witch option expiration, which was a roller coaster. The market though proved relentless. So let's get into the analysis. Cues had a breakout and basically we have been talking about this uh, from uh, this little congestion here. And I've mentioned last week that I like the formation because it's coming from a really powerful trend with the higher highs and the higher lows. I like the fact that the pop-up came on August 6th off the 200 SMA, and we actually had a higher low on September 6th. We, the, and these are the pros. The cons were that we had a high and a lower high, but the context was in a massive, massive uptrend. So last week, we finally broke out, so we were relatively sideways, and within the last two days, we exploded post FOMC. Thursday, Friday, we actually made new highs. This is the daily chart, and we are definitely challenging the prior high from August 22nd. So now, if the price action proves strong, we should actually be above, be trading this week above this prior high and we should start seeing targets into the 500. So we have a really nice tradable void from where we are trading right now to the 500 level. So it should be looking positive for this week. So let's not forget one thing. We are into resistance. However, if we break this resistance based upon the price action that we will be getting, on Monday or Tuesday, we should be accelerating higher. Now, there are two things that we have to consider. Earning season, which we don't have much left. Actually, for this week, we have uh, Micron and Costco. I know Costco is reporting Thursday after the close, and on Wednesday after the close, we have Micron. These are the two big companies that I'm looking at for earnings. But other than that, we have a bunch of small companies not likely to impact the market at all. We have AutoZone, I think, on Tuesday before the market opens, KB Homes, uh, and then we have just some very little companies that are going to report they're not going to be very significant. And I think the major uh, focus will be on Micron and Costco. So bottom line is that if we manage to escape through these highs, we may be able to move higher. I like the weekly chart as well. You could see here the progression higher. We see the higher highs. We see the higher lows. So this is looking relatively very, very, very strong. Again, you can see the residue resistance that we have here as well onto the weekly from that last uh, um, end, I would say end of uh, August. We break above this, then we're challenging the 500. So therefore we are looking very strong. Now, if the price action should rotate, because of course we're looking at the upside and of course we're looking if there's some trouble along the way. So if this week we will be encountering any kind of divergency, any kind of issues into the market and the market is going to turn around, then this is the danger zone, the 470. 
we break 470, we're going to start moving lower, most likely back into the 450, possibly even 445 or even lower to test lower into the 435. But we're going to take it one day at a time. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm a little bit more optimistic this week. It may play out or it may not play out. But typically, historically speaking, price action has proven that the last week of the quarter, which we are entering today, uh, should be bullish. And specifically for the stocks that have been all really performing well within this quarter. And we do have, for example, Meta, right? That, that's just one example. We have Costco. They're part of uh, the queues. Broadcom had a really nice recovery. Uh, Broadcom is just uh, waiting for another breakout. Uh, we have NVIDIA as well. So if any of these power players or a group of these power players are going, or if semis, semis are going to start moving higher, we're going to have an explosion this week towards the end of the week, right? Towards the end of the week, probably Thursday, Friday, and then next Monday, we will have a rally. This is part of window dressing. So hedge funds, um, portfolio managers are dressing up their portfolio, which means that they are going to be selling some um, stocks that have been underperforming and that, that are negative into their accounts. And they're going to jump into high flying stocks. So if we see a stock that is trading into all time highs, most likely that that particular stock will continue higher. We just need to identify a pattern and identify some of these stocks so we can have a good risk because the outcome could be positive, could create a massive follow through because we're talking about institutional money. So this is the window dressing effect that we will be entering as soon as today. Today, tomorrow, it's going to be more uh, in focus as we're heading into Wednesday, but typically it's around, you know, 10 days before the end, before the last day of the month, and sometimes uh, just three days ahead if the market has been choppy. So these, these are my thoughts in the queues. So we're trading into resistance. We escape this resistance. We're moving higher. And if not, and if we start breaking 470, then we're going to start moving lower. So these are the key levels that we need to focus on. Now, let's uh, jump into SPIES. SPIES, all-time high on Thursday. Beautiful, beautiful momentum, beautiful move, right? And as you can see here, we have an inside bar formation, which was on Friday. It's not a surprise that we have an inside bar because it was quadruple witch option expiration. And typically the market is a little bit more volatile, but I do appreciate the fact that we had a wonderful Thursday and when we punched above this resistance and this inside bar can mean two things. Number one, could it be bullish above and could be bearish below. So could be bullish above over Friday's high or bearish below under Friday's low. But bearish below, I wouldn't really consider the bearish below, and that's because we're trading above the 10 exponential moving average, which means that the price action may have exponentially more traction to the upside. So we will be watching 569.30 for an extension higher in SPY. So SPYs are definitely stronger than the Qs. So we may see some window dressing in some uh, power playing stocks and sectors into the spice. So we're gonna monitor that. And of course, the scanning per se for this particular phenomenon for window dressing will begin today. I already have some stocks that are on our list and needless to say, we are in power players. We're in Microsoft, we're in Costco, we're in Apple, we're, we have position as spy. So it is very, we're positioned relatively I would say really well <laughs> for, uh, for this end of the um, month, for the end of the quarter. Now let's take a look at diamonds. Diamonds 
escaped, finally escaped over this resistance high into the 415, extending higher Friday, sort of inside bar formation. So we have Thursday acceleration inside bar. And of course, like with any other doji and inside bars, we could discuss the bullish above and the bearish below scenario. So we may be bullish above 421 and we can start a pullback under 418. 50. So these are going to be the two focal points that we will be focusing on tomorrow. They're not going to they're not going to be for the week. For the week, this is what we're going to be watching. Uh we're going to be watching the pullback potentially under 41555. And of course, if we break the high, the 42275 up we go. Now let's talk about TLT here. TLT potentially, and this is the weekly chart, could potentially have a sandwich formation. A sandwich is when we have the price action moving higher. And at one point we have this little pause with the green bar, but then again, you have some big players coming in and they take the price higher. So we have all we for this to happen. If the price gets over 101.57, Definitely it's going to start going into a tradable void all the way into the prior highs. So you have a triple high right here formation into the 108 to 109. Now, this is a pretty bearish bar. So that means that if we start breaking the 98 bucks and 50 cents, I'm going to give it a little bit of room here, not quite 88. There is a possibility that we start coming in towards the 10 EMA. I'm not excited for shorting this area. Why? Because it's above the 10 exponential, above the 20 simple moving average, above the 50 simple moving average, and it is above the trend line right here. So this is a big inflection point. It's normal for the price action to react like this. Even when we had the steeper pullback here, we had the pullback but it was still rotating here. So it created a higher low in comparison to prior low. So it, this was the first sign that the price action is ready to go higher. So it's a matter of digestion, whether we're gonna come in to this uh, 10 EMA or the 20 SMA or even this trend line and rotate and continue a little bit higher, that's fine. So it's gonna be a day by day watch with TLT. Then we have IWM. IWM, I'm going to take you to back to the daily here. Okay, so what do we have here? We had a high, we had a lower high, but here we had a low and a higher low. So we had sort of like a bullish pennant because we're coming from a little bit of uptrend. See, right here, a little bit of an uptrend here. So obviously we we talked about this uh, declining uh, trend line last week and we said that if the price action is going to start rolling below the moving averages, the price action is going to start moving towards the 200 SMA and the prior low. So this is what we discussed. We also discussed the fact that if we break above this 217, we're going to try to challenge this prior high and ultimately achieve this high. Okay, so this is from the daily. Now what's the plan for this week inside bar again with the doji on thursday so that means that inside bar doji were more likely to refer to the doji example than anything else one thing that i'm noticing here is that the price is elevated and extended from the 10 exponential moving average so it's not that close by so that means that there could be some pullback here but if the price is uh, today is going to manage to take out the high, this high right here, Friday's high, then we are going to start marching higher. Just want to give you the bigger picture right here. Uh, and I'm going to take this out. Okay. The bigger picture here, and this is a monthly chart. So finally, we're getting this rotation into Russell. The support is actually formed by the power of the prior double top formation, the top that was 2018 and the top from 2020. So these two tops right here held this, held this, this massive bottom here that was formed from April 22, all the way the rotation which came in in December 23. And now we're trading back into the resistance from 21. So here, what I'm noticing is that we're very close to triggering this monthly 
sandwich breakout. So this 224, I would say the 225 level is going to be key to breaking out higher and challenging the prior highs from 2021 because we haven't seen these prices since 2021. And if we manage to take these out, these out, we're going towards 250 and 300. So this is pretty impressive. Let's take a look at the VIX. At the VIX here, we discussed last week that if the price action is going to stay below $19, the market is going to go higher. So you can see here, this is market higher territory because it's like a teeter-totter. And if the price action is going to zip up and trade below, uh, trade above 23 bucks, 23, 23, 50, 23, 75, close to 24, the market is in trouble. The market is going to going to implode. So this kept us so really, really safe as well. Now let's take a look at oil and I'm going to go to a higher time frame. Okay. This is the monthly chart. Notice oil here. So for the month of uh, September, it came in violated the 20 SMA, but it's still trading into exactly into that 20 SMA. So it's not giving up. It does have a prior support from December, 2023, but it's still flat. It's still sideways. We're not seeing any actionable idea just yet. You can see how choppy it is here. It went a little bit below the trend line, sucking everybody in here and here and here and then get, you know, kind of like going for all that for those stops and stopping everybody out. And now, you know, it closed a little bit higher on Friday. I would just stay away from it right now. It doesn't have like a short term, um, you know, really good pattern, a tradable pattern. So let's just stay away from it. And then we have gold. As always, we analyze gold. Gold is performing relatively well, really well. We have a trade that we initiated, initiated July 15th at $225.75. And we had uh, several targets amongst which we have uh, achieved three of them, the 228, the $230 and the $240. And it does have a lot of room for higher. So I'm just going to do a little projection here based on the weekly, based on these highs right here and the lowest support zone that we have to show you that we still have room to the 248. So this is what we're going to be shooting for right now. We're already trading at 242.21. We had a high at 242.63. Now our next target is going to be at or around 248. All right. Now, Let's move on to some trade ideas that we have for this week because we have, you know, quite a few, quite a few stocks. Uh, first one is uh, HWM. Okay, HWM, which is literally looking for a breakout, very powerful. Uh, the one thing that I'm looking at, especially into the end of the quarter, is to see the quarter performance. And to this period, it has been up 23%, over 23% for this quarter. I'm looking at the monthly and I'm seeing like a doji. Uh, I'm seeing a doji candle for the month of August and I'm seeing a huge bottoming tail. That means buying, a lot of buying here. And you can see here that the bottoming tail here was bought, right? Because at one point this was a red bar and now it's just zipped up. It closed very neutral into a, I would say, neutral towards bullish. Uh, bullish because the uptrend is uh, incredible. And notice here that we have had some sandwiches in April 2024 and we had another sandwich July 2024 in which we extended higher from 85 bucks to all the way to about let's say 95 bucks so this could be another move could potentially be another move to the upside and we have room to um we have room for 100 104 these are the uh, two of the immediate targets so we have a double top formation with a low and a higher low which suggests that the price action may have a breakout pending so we may start moving a little bit higher so once again the entry 97 dollars and 990 cents uh or you could even take it 98 98 20 acceptable entries um the stop is going to have to be below the pivot 90 dollars and uh 
volume is looking okay, very low. And we had option expiration, so we'll see. But um, pretty much the pattern looks good. Another stock is FTNT, okay, which again is ready for a breakout. And again, as we're heading into the end of the quarter, look at this massive base right here. This is just waiting to break out, waiting to break out massively. Um, this is actually good for a long-term pattern. Okay, I don't have any position FTNT long-term, but it does look very good for long-term. Very good. It has a lot of support here into the 43s. It has the nice 50 SMA running. It's above the MAs, the 20 and the 10 EMA. It looks very good. But what we're going to be focusing on basically is going to be the weekly. So our entry is going to be 7690. It's going to be just over this week's high and last week's high because we had sort of like equal highs right here. And we had a doji bar, then indecision, and then we had this candle that is trying to break above the high on Friday, I'm meaning last week, but it didn't. So we're waiting for, uh, for the price to uh, see if it could do it uh, today, this week, and anytime this week. So we're going to look to see if we get a bar or an, an open and a, uh, and a rip higher. Um, that would be phenomenal. So uh, 7690, stop 73, just below this tail right there. And we have targets into the, um, uh, into this 70, uh, uh, into the uh, 78. Well, that would be the first target. Uh, and 78 is actually coming from this, these prior highs here. So I decided to choose on the candle here and then we're going to go for the wick into the 80 bucks. So 78 to 80 bucks. Uh, these are going to be the first two targets. Okay. Now we do have Micron, like I said, that are it's reporting, but AMD is looking rather well here for a potential breakout. I don't have parameters yet on it, but it's just a watch. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's under the 200 simple moving average, but I do like the weekly though, because the weekly looks like it really wants to break above these highs right here into the 160. And once it breaks the 160 highs, it may start running fast towards the 180. I don't have parameters yet. We're going to have to see on Monday if we get a better entry on it. Then we have JP Morgan. All right, we have JP Morgan, which is sitting right on the 20 SMA. This is the weekly chart. Very powerful. Notice the massive power trend. So it has been on a tear and we had this trade last year. We made so much money last year on this rip. And then we finally got the pullback, rally, pullback, rally, pullback. We had four consecutive weeks of rally here in August. And then we had uh, another two bar pullback here. Um, that is September in September and we have an inside bar here. This is very interesting because this could be very bullish over um, 212. So I think that we should actually, you know, get ready for this 212. The reason why I didn't really, um, but I guess we can get, uh, the, the, I was not very excited because I don't know where to place the stop here, whether to put it under the 204 or to place it under the 200. Okay. So I think we could start with the stop at 200 instead of the 204, or if we get the trigger over 212 here, I don't know. Let's just say 200 for the stop. Okay. And we're looking for a first target that is going to be into the 220 and 225. It makes a lot of sense um to uh to take this trade uh fomc is out of the picture and things may go back to bullish and i really like the daily as well this is a daily like i said i have been struggling with the uh stop but i think it makes more sense to put the stop at uh a stop at 200 so uh like i said M uh, jp morgan looks very good for another rip higher um the other stock is so which is basing very bullishly here. So it did a breakout and now it's basing into the breakout zone. 
This could be very bullish over the highs here. So this could be over $90. Let me see the quarterly again. Yeah, quarterly, very bullish, monthly bullish. This is a bull flag. Yeah, very, very bullish. So um, definitely SO, something that I really like over $90. And let's say 50 cents. Let's give it a little bit of room to prove to us that it's going to go higher. And I would put the stop at $87 for a start. And um, I think that we should go for our first target into $100. I, the, it has a little bit of projection uh, resistance into the 95. Let's put 95 and then 100. It's going to... It's going to be really attractive towards uh, towards the $100 mark. Um, IWM, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, IBM, IBM again, very bullish. You can see it on the daily, looking for a breakout here. Uh, it has been on a power trend since August uh, the 9th, and then it had a very brief pullback here again. Uh, think about AI every, and, you know, I've been uh, scanning a little bit through the AI stocks uh, and, you know, like IBM, Annette, Twilio, Micron, Intel, Google, PLTR, Amazon, STX, Meta, etc. They're incredibly bullish. Very, very bullish. Um, so we do have to so see this is the thing like I feel like I'm chasing it. So I'm just going to keep it on the list. I'm going to give you the parameters that I'm looking for. Uh, so basically, we will be looking over these highs. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so we would be looking at over these highs, the 218.50. So if you want to take a 218.50 and your stop would be 210. It looks very good for another leg higher. All right. And then we have PLTR with the same sandwich. This could be bullish over, uh, over, over Friday's high. And we could use the stop into the 10 EMA because it has been riding above this 10 EMA. And it, of course, if it's going to break, I mean, we could put it like 35 for sure. Okay. Because if it wants to do a little bit of a wing down, it shouldn't take us out. So 35 is, you know, quite enough. So we could do 37 over 37, 40. And we could have the stop at 35. And we can, uh, let's see here. See, I love this. This is, wow. This is incredible. I had a, see, this is a, this could be a really good contender for window dressing. That's what I can see. That's what I can say. I just want to calculate this projection again uh, to refresh my memory because I know, oh, it's not, not the right one. All right, let's do this. All right. Just want to calculate this projection again. Yeah, we have room to um, $39, $39. That would be like the, I would say like the first target. And then we will be looking for a continuation into 45. Not bad. So I would say uh, $39, $40 because it's a big deal. These whole numbers are a big deal and we can break this space into two, about 42 to 45. Uh, 45 may be a bit, a bit, a little bit long-term then, um, yeah, could it be a little bit long-term. So this could take months probably to get in there, but I think we have some pretty good contenders for today. So once again, uh, I'm going to go through them very quickly. We have H W M with a breakout. We have FTNT with a breakout. We have JP Morgan again, pot potential continuation higher. It may have a little bit of issues here with the 10 EMA, but once it grabs onto this 10 EMA, it's going to try to lift higher into the 217 and into the 225. I think it's a good one. Uh, I think AMD's performance is going to be also uh, correlated with uh, Micron, whatever Micron is going to do uh, this week. So we'll see. So AMD again. I'm worried a bit about this 10 EMA because it got rejected here and it got rejected here. But other than that, it looks good. Uh, and if Micron will post good earnings, it may transfer some of the energy to it. Uh, we have SO again, breakout. We have IBM. Like I said, with IBM, I, 
we we could have it over two I would say uh, 218, um, let's say 60, because we want to take it a little bit higher than that bar right there. And lastly, we have the PLTR, which is relatively good here because it has this nice target. So these are the first trades for this week. We're going to see what kind of week we're, we have. And based on the uh, week, whether we pro bullish, we're going to add more trades to the game. But I think we're already, like I said, we're already in a plethora of uh, really good trades already. So we haven't had any stop outs last week. Uh, that is always perfect. And we have uh, had some really good momentum ongoing. So this is it for today, guys. Um, I wish you have a great, phenomenal week ahead. And if you have any questions, shoot an email at info at trailout.com. Don't forget to uh, set your alerts for set notifications on your phone and uh, to hit that bell on X so you get notified every single time I post anything there. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great, phenomenal week. And I'll see you next week with a brand new video.